I welcome you all to another video tutorial session on finite element problem for solving um, structural engineering problem. In today's video, we are looking at the concept of symmetry as it applies to um, continuous beam system. We are going to uh, solve a symmetric um, beam system uh, by applying the concept of symmetry. Um, in my under, I remember in my undergraduate studies, uh, when I was reading um, a textbook, I came across a full span source, and the author of that textbook actually analyzed that full span, span source using the concept of symmetry. Only half of the source system was analyzed. I was very, very confused. I didn't know what the author was doing that time because I didn't understand the concept of uh, symmetry. The author um, analyzed the um, source system um, by using the concept of symmetry, and it, it didn't have to, it, it didn't have, it didn't it did not um, have to analyze the full source system simply because um, the the source system was symmetric um, by loading and geometry. Uh, the concept of symmetry, as it applies to um, um, source system, can also be applied to beam system, like um, on the screen shown. We have a three uh, span continuous beam, and the three span continuous beam is um, loaded with a uniform load of um, 10 kN per meter square and then two 30 kN load on the first and on the third span. So, um, for this um, problem, if we also notice that we can also, we should also notice that um, the span of the um, of the the span the, the length of the three spans are equal seven meter uh, seven meter we have seven meter for each of the three span seven meter seven meter seven meter um so because um if we should draw a vertical line along the middle of the of the uh, continuous uh, beam system, what we have on the left hand side will be what is on the right hand side. We can see that this beam uh, structure is um, is symmetric. Uh, we have 30 kN load on the left hand side. We also have 30 kN load on the right hand side. We have uniform distributed load on the left and on the right hand side also. Also the span, the first span is seven meter the last span is seven meter. You can see what is on the left hand side is what is on the right hand side. So because of this, we can understand the, we can um, use the concept of uh, symmetry simply by analyzing, simply by analyzing half of this, half of the structure. See this part of the structure. So uh, to explain, to better explain the concept of um, symmetry, uh, the simplest, um, uh, beam system where you can where we can explain the concept of um, symmetry is a simply supported um, is a simply supported uh, beam this is a simply supported beam as you see on my screen we have um, a simply supported beam with a with a um, it, with a uniform distributed load of um, Q kN per meter the length of the the, sp the length of the uh, span is um, L meter, uh, and you see um, I have on what under it I have shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. The maximum bending moment for the simplest beam, as we all know, is um, Q L square over H, where Q is the uniformly distributed load and L is the length of the span. Uh, we have the shear force here. The shear force at the ends are Q L over two, Q L over two. So um, for this um, for this um, um, simple supported beam, if we should also draw a vertical line along the mid span, along the center of the simple supported beam, you will notice that what is on the left hand side is also what is on the right hand side. So because of um, this fact, we can just analyze half of the beam, and so you, you can just pick uh, this portion of the beam and analyze. But in doing that, we have to um, 
restrain the rotation of the beam <coughs> at um, that center of the beam. If you should notice, um, at if you check the bending moment diagram, the bending moment diagram, at this point, we the where the uh, bending moment is um, QL square over eight, the slope, the slope of the of the bending moment there is um. This the slope the slope angle is um is um theta equals to zero. There is no rotation at that point. You can see the slope is um the slope line is uh, per, um perfectly horizontal. So it means that theta equals to zero. So if theta equals to zero, so it means that uh, at that point, if we can restrain a um, moment. If you can restrain the if you can restrain rotation at that point equals to zero, uh, we, we should be able to um, get um, QL square over eight in our half model. So this is this is our half model for the simple supported beam. And at this point, this support system I actually put, the only thing it's doing is that it is um, restraining moment, the moment to be generated at this point due to the restrain. I'm going to place theta equals to zero. So if you should analyze, you can analyze this structure manually, and uh, taking uh, rotation at this point equals to zero, and taking the length of half of the, define the length of the span equals to um, l, l l over two. So if you should analyze this structure, you will see that our shear force on the right hand side will be QL over 2 and the bending moment if you calculate the uh, moment at the uh, support as the mass, uh, you will see that the, bend, the, bend, the, the moment or the bending moment is um, QL square over 8 which is the same thing you can see the shear force the half shear force is the same thing with what we have here and the half bending moment is the same thing with what we have here just considering this part so What's on the left hand side is what's on the right hand side. So we can just mirror it to um, get um, the full analysis. So th and this is explanation of the source uh, of the beam system uh, by applying the concept of symmetry for simply supported beam. Uh, but in this, um, um, in this uh, tutorial video, my aim is actually to um, analyze the three, three span continuous beam, which I showed you earlier. Uh, so, I would, uh, my aim is to analyze this um, beam system on the ANSYS software um, by uh, considering just half, half of the uh, beam structure because the beam is symmetry. So, this is what I mean. Because the beam is symmetry about uh, this line. I'm, I'm only going to consider this portion of the uh, beam. And if you consider that portion of the beam, I've actually drawn it here. This is the beam structure. And once you, um, you are considering half of it, you should automatically know that you are applying a restraint at that midpoint. The rotation at that point is um, zero. So you need to restrain the rotation at that point. And restraining the rotation at that point will induce a moment at that point. So this is the structure we are going to analyze on the ANSYS software. Actually, I'm going to analyze both the full thrust and the uh, half thrust, and we're going to compare the results. Uh, before I dive into the go, dive into the ANSYS software, I would like to also show you that by uh, giving the engineering property of the, uh, the 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 engineering property of our beam system. We are told that the young modulus is in 205 and gigapascal, and the cross sectional area of the, um, of, of the of the of the of the of the beam is is a square of length uh, 280 mm. This L is um, like the length of one side of the um, square section. So. Yeah. This is not span, it's actually length of one side of the uh, square section, 280 by 280 mm square cross section. So um, now I'm going to move to the ANSYS software so that we can um, solve the problem. So what, as we always do, um, 
on the left hand side click on the static structure um left click on it and drag and drop to the middle of the screen uh so after that after this trying to load after this um we we can change the like the name of the static structure server scholarly is by default it is called a um, static structure we can call it a beam symmetry problem you can give it any name you want same symmet beam symmetry problem so now that we have named it uh, the next thing we do as we always do we move uh, through the workflow given here from the engineering data to the results so from the engineering data this is, you double click on it uh, this is where we define our engineering property of our structure so i've clicked on it so what you need to do here you need to click create a new material so i'm going to type steel as my new name of a new material you can give it any name i'm assuming the material is steel uh, because uh, the young modulus of steel is around uh, 205 uh, gigapascal so i call it steel so i will um, the i will need to add um, a linear elastic property to the to the new material created so i'm adding them um, on the left hand side of my screen you left click and you drag um, this isotropic elasticity and you drop it on the new materials here so once you have done that we um, you see this table below here these yellow fields we need to fill them up the young the first one is the young modulus and what we need to do here uh, as given in our PowerPoint, the young modulus is 205 gigapascal. Uh, so we need to um, enter that value, change the unit of the young modulus to gigapascal and enter um, 205. The portion ratio is not an important um, parameter, but in ANSYS, we need to um, specify a value for it. If we don't specify a value for it, ANSYS will not be able to run results. But it is not an important um, parameter. We can give it any arbitrary value. Uh, in this video tutorial, I'm going to take a value of 0.3 as my portion ratio. So once you have done this, you have, it means that you have defined your, we have defined our, um, <laughs> we have provided the minimum uh, engineering property to define our material. Uh, if you want to model complex behavior, you can add other property. But for this beam problem, we only need to uh, add the isotropic elastic elasticity property. Uh, so this is enough. I'm going to close this engineering data tab now. Now we come. We, we, you can see the engineering data is checked, meaning that we have defined our material. We move to the next um, tab, geometry. Under the geometry, before you double click it. Uh, you need to, uh, on the right hand side of your screen, you need to check the line body. It will be checked because we want to, um, we are using um, um, ANSYS um, beam finite elements. ANSYS beam finite elements. So you need to check this. And you also need to ch check that your analysis type is set to um, 3D. It is very important. So now you come to the geometry, you right click on it. And uh, once you right click on it, you should see a contextual bar and you click on new space clean geometry. Uh, as we are waiting for space clean to open, something just occurred to me. I did not explain it uh, while I was on PowerPoint. Um, on PowerPoint, there are two ways of modeling this um, support restraint at this midpoint. There is a tool on PowerPoint called the uh, Symmetry Region Tool. Uh, we can use it to model this theta equals to zero, or we can just apply a support, a support, uh, a displacement support, a rotation support where we uh, restrain the rotation to be zero. And why I'm talking about this, uh, before I made this video, I tried to use the ANSYS um, symmetric region tool. But although I was able to run analysis, but 
ANSYS was unable to display results whenever I use that um, symmetric region tool. So it was unable to display the results. Uh, in my, I think uh, this happened because I updated my software version to the latest um, um, ANSYS version 2022 out out to. Um, the version I was using before, I was able to use that symmetric region to effectively with no problem. But after I updated the, <clears throat> after I updated my ANSYS program, I was not able to use the uh, <clears throat> symmetric region to, to solve the problem. It was always giving me an error message. So in this video, I'm only going to explain how we solve the half beam system by applying a rotational restraint of theta equals to zero, we are not going to use the uh, ANSYS um, symmetric tool. So there are other ways of doing it. It's not compulsory you use the ANSYS symmetric tool. Once you know what, <laughs> what uh, the symmetric tool is doing, you can actually uh, solve the problem uh, by other method. So this, the space claim um, is active now. So what we need to do, we need to select our uh, drawing plane by clicking that button, which I just click below here, the second button. So you move your cursor around, if you move your cursor in this direction, you select the XY plane and you click on this fourth button here to bring this plane to plan view. So once you have done this, you can now model our our source system. I'm going to model both the um, I'm going to model both uh, the foot source and the half source. Uh, in modeling the foot source, we need to define like the foot source, the, uh, the foot source. In modeling the foot beam, the foot beam has a um, three span, but we're not going to use the three, three lengths to define the full beam. We are going to actually define uh, divide the uh, beam, this beam structure into um, um, five parts. Five parts because we need to consider all salient points. Where this uh, 30 kN load is applied is a salient point, so we need to consider this point. And also where this 30 kN load is applied is a salient point, so we need to consider this point. So I'm going to divide my beam structure into part one, which is 3.5 meter long, part two, which is also 3.5 meter long, 7 meter minus 3.5 is 3.5. This is three, the, the second span is uh, 3,500 uh, mm. The, third, um, the fourth part, because there is no any uh, point load in between the span, so the third part, the length will be 7 meter. The fourth part, um, the length, the fourth part, the length will be 3,500. Why is it 3,500? You can see we're giving the span as 7,000 mm. The other part as 2,500. So here must be 2,500. So this is the fourth part, and the fifth part is um, 3,500. For our half model, we also have um, three, sp three parts. Part one, 3,500. Part two, 3,500. And um, let me erase. And part three. This is part three. 3,500. So um, we are modeling the full the full beam with five um, beam elements, and we are modeling the half uh, beam structure with uh, three elements, with three beam elements. So I'm going to do that now in the ANSYS software. Uh, So click on the line tool uh, under the create um, tab. Click on it. Um, so I'm going to start my drawing from the zero zero um, coordinate system. So I'll click on it. I will extend my I will extend the line to the right to my right hand side. I will enter three thousand five hundred mm. The first part of the um, the first part of the um, this is the first part of the um, full beams, 
the full beam system. Click it on 500, but you should not, don't press enter, press tab to also define the um, angle. Very important. Enter it as zero. If you see zero, don't assume it is zero because it might be misleading. It might be 0 0.0001 and any slight um, difference will um, give you um, wrong results and you might, act, you might actually find it difficult to uh, obtain results when you are uh, trying to um, run the analysis uh, on the mechanical work environment. So you must always enter the length and the, and the angle dimension to specify each part of the beam. So press enter. The second part is also 3500 as I already explained. 3500. Your angle tab 180 mm. The third part is 7 meter, that is 7000 mm. Press tab, the angle is 180 mm. The fourth part is um, 3500 tab 180. The fifth part, which is the last part, is uh, 3500. So press tab 180. So uh, press escape to leave, to disconnect from that point. Um, now I want to um, sketch the half um, beam model. Uh, so I, will, I, will, I want to sketch it five meters below this um, full, full model sketch. So and I want to sketch it using this center point as a reference point. So uh, uh, with my cursor at that point, uh, press shift on your on your keyboard and go down. So you can now enter um, zero tap minus 5,000. So now I can start my, this is the first point of my half beam model. So you can actually use the, uh, the node as a reference point. It's quite accurate, you can see. I don't need to enter uh, the value here. It's quite accurate. Each part of the, the, the app model is made up of three parts. Uh, and each part is in 3500. So I've done the three part now. Press escape to disconnect from that point. Uh, now we can escape again to disconnect from the line command. You can now click on the end sketch editing. So after this, what you need to do, you need to um, assign your geometric property to this line component. Uh, that is the cross-sectional area. We need to assign our cross-sectional area to the line, to, to, the, to this our model, the full beam model and the half beam model. So um, click on um, prepare, the prepare on, the, on the ribbon, click, click on the prepare tab. Under the beam panel, click profile. But since our, our um, cross-section is a solid, solid um, cross section which is square so we'll click on this this um, option here so once you click on it you will notice on the left hand side of your screen under the structural tree the a beam uh, profile folder is created if you should open it you'll see a the cross sectional area which you just created so we need to edit the dimension of the cross section. By default, the, you right click and click on edit beam profile. By default, the cross sectional area is given as a 10 mm by 10 mm. Well, we know from our problem that we want our cross section to be 280 mm. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to enter 280 mm here. Yeah as the length of the first side B and also 280 mm as the length of the second side. We call the, le the length of the second side H. I see this is a 200 mm, H is a 280 mm too. So you can see, you can see it. This is our solid cross sectional area, square, square cross sectional area. So it has been defined now. I can close um, this rectangular tab here. I close it. I click on the structure here. Uh, what we need to do 
after this, what we need to do, we need to um, apply this uh, rectangular cross section to the beam model. And we do this by creating the, by, by clicking this create uh, button here. And uh, we can see under this profile, we only have one profile and the profile is called rectangle. So we can add other profile, but this is the only profile I need. So with this profile selected, we click on the rectangular button here. And we we'll apply this profile rectangle to each of the line components. So you click, just need to click on each of the line components. I'm out of the two crates. So now I've applied the um, the rectangular cross section to each of the line components. After this, one more thing you need to do. We need to connect the line component together. If you don't connect it, you will face difficulty in the future. This step is very, very important in the, in the ANSYS working uh, procedure. Think under the workbench tab. Uh, we just, all you just need to do to connect each part together, you just need to click on this button here, share. We call it shared topology. So if you click on it, you will notice uh, like you will notice this happens. And uh, once you click on this uh, complete, the line components they are connected together. They are connected together. So this is how we define our geometric uh, model for the full and the half beam on the ANSYS um, software. So what we can close uh, this basically working environment now because we are done. Uh, it's saying we should save. It does not let say we should save, but this when it's saying you should save, you can save it. Save you save the file in the folder. Uh, let me call it um, symmetric beam. Symmet let me just call it symmetry. Save. Click on save, and I it will close in a, in a minute or in a second. So if you should notice, because it's you should save, it did not check my geometric uh, step, which I've already defined. Uh, which uh, what you need to do is once you notice that it is not checked. If I if it didn't show me save, and I close, it's, it's actually going to check this step. Well, because it showed me, uh, it it uh, prompted me to save. It did not um, add that. It didn't add my model which I created uh, to this um, step. So what you need to do, we need to add it manually uh, to this step. So you right click on it. You will import um, the geometry because we have already created it. So I'm importing it uh, to this step three now. I think it is under my um, desktop new folder. Uh, it's on, this is where I saved it. So symmetry. This is my symmetry um, space uh, space claim file. So I will open it here. Once you do that, you see this is checked which is what I want. Now we can move to the model, um, uh, the step four, the model um, the model step. You should double click on it. The mechanical working environment will be op open. And this is, in the, mechan the mechanical work environment is where we define our um, finite element type. Uh, like, are we using linear or quadratic elements? What is our size of our finite element? And this is where we um, define our boundary condition, like the support boundary condition, the structural load boundary condition. And after we have done this, we run analysis and we view the result we want to view. Either we want to view bending moment diagram, shear force diagram, deformation diagram. So we do that. So it's taking a while to, it's currently starting mechanical. Uh, it will take like a while to open. 
now the uh, mechanical work environment is now active um, so we, this is what we see this is the uh, model um, 3d uh, window on the mechanical work environment if i click on this arrow i can view this model in the xy plane so you see my full model at the top you see my half model below uh, on the left hand side of um, the screen we see a structural tree a project let's call it a project structural tree and under this project structural tree we see branches geometric imports geometry material cross section this geometric import actually a new branch in the new uh, ANSYS um, update in previous in the pre in previous ANSYS um, version this branch was not available so we have this um, this branch, this is a new branch in the ANSYS software. Uh, so, but we don't need to do anything on, on that branch. If we, let's move to the second branch, geometry. Let's open this symmetric um, part. And we see two parts. The first part is our full model um, geometry, and the second part is our half model geometry. You can see it's turned. When I select the first part, it turns green. When I select the second part, the second part turns green. So the, what we need to do here, we need to assign our engineering property to this uh, two um, geometric model. The, the engineering property which we created in, at the beginning of the video, which I called um, steel. So what you, and you, you need to hold down your control key and select the two geometric model and below you need to we need to change the material um, assignment from structural steel to steel so now we are, if you check um, both both geometric model they are both assigns the steel uh, material engineering data the steel uh, material so after after you are done done with that this uh, the material branch they are actually two uh, materials currently defined in the ANSYS software. This structural steel is defined by default. This steel is what we created manually by ourselves. So we don't need to do anything here. Uh, under the cross section, uh, this is the cross section we created in the space clean working environment, the rectangular cross section, which is a 280 mm by 280 mm, um, um, 280 by 280 mm square section. Can see B and H is 0.28 meters. Um, the 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 coordinate system. Um, this uh, this is the coordinate system for the um, for our model. We only have one coordinate system, but you can create other coordinate system to suit your use. Uh, I'm actually going to create one more coordinate system. I'm not going, I'm not creating it now. Uh, further in my video, I will tell you why I create uh, why I'm why we need to create um, that coordinate system. Um, under the connection, we don't need to do anything on that tab. Under the mesh, um, I want to uh, introduce you to, I want to teach you how to use the mesh tool on the ANSI software. I can actually do everything I need to do by changing the engineering order to um, linear, to, to, that I choose linear and quadratic, uh, and element size, I give it my value of like 0 0.1 meters. But I, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to use the global setting. I'm going to uh, use define it uh, one by one. And how you do that, you I click on your your mesh uh, branch insert. You, you select method. So when you select method, this method automatic method tool is created. Now we need to assign the geometry to the the geometry we want to this automatic method tool. So select um, your full beam and your half beam by holding down your control key and apply the, the two geometry model by clicking on apply. So you see uh, two bodies have been applied to this um, automatic method. So under the engineering order, I will change it to quadratic because I want higher accuracy results. The quadratic results, the, using quadratic uh, finite elements, 
it's more accurate uh, than the um, linear finite element. So I'm using the quadratic uh, finite element. So that's why I chose quadratic. Um, also under the mesh, insert, I will insert sizing. Uh, you also need to um, select the two bodies by holding down your control key and applying the two bodies to the sizing tool, which was which, which is just which is created. So apply. So to have two bodies, element size. We leave it at element size. Element uh, the element size um, dimension. It's currently set to like 1.076 mm. That is too big. Uh, we use a smaller element, 100 mm. That's 0.1 meters. Uh, if you notice when we are solving a finite element problem manually, we consider the full length of a span as our length of our finite element. But in software, we need to use a smaller element to get better accurate results. The manual calculation is different from the software calculation. In the software calculation, we need to use a smaller element. It do, you will not get results if you are only considering the full span of the of the uh, of each span. Say the full span is seven meters and you enter seven meters here, you cannot get accurate results for um beam for beam problem to solve why you are solving beam problem. Uh, I think in my previous video um, in the one dimension problem and in source system, I actually use the full length of the beam as my element size and I go with it. But in beam problem you need to use a very small finite element. See in this year I'm using 100 mm 100 mm as my as my initial uh, finite element size. This should give me a very accurate result. Um, so this is what we need to define under the mesh. If we don't do this, it's not actually composite, we create this tool tool. If you don't want to do that, you can just uh, use this uh, global setting, the, the, ele the element order, you change it to quadratic, the element size, you change it here to 0 0.1. So any of the two. So these are, these are just like local controls, right? The one here is um, global controls. So I am um, set up, I've uh, specified my global and local controls. Anyone ANSYS wants to use, let, let it use. So now we move to the static structure. This is where we define our boundary condition. First, we define our uh, support boundary condition. Uh, if we should look at um, the problem on our PowerPoint, let me erase all this. Uh, we look at our full our full span, our full geometric model. We have a um, three span, and we have um, a support here, a support here, a support here, and a support here. We have four support in this um, in the full geometric model. So I'm going to um, place a support at every seven meter along the full model. For the half model, we have a simply supported. We have a pin support here, and we have a pin support here, and we have a rotational support here. A rotational support where the where I restrain theta equals to zero. This theta is actually the theta like in the z direction. If if this is the x y plane, if this is our x y plane, so the theta. The theta that will be restrained will be in the z direction. Theta z equals to zero because we are drawing our beam. Our beam length is in the our beam sketch is in the x y plane. So I'm going to specify this um, boundary support boundary condition on the ANSI software. So remember all this. I'm going to do that now. Me, I would, if the support location are already in my head. So I think you should. Note where the support condition are um, mechanical. So static structure. I click on it. Insert um, support. We are using the pin, the um, simply support to denote 
all the supports along the beam. So I've created a simply support. So what you need to do, you need to assign the node points to each support. So make sure you select the vertices truly. When you're on, at, this, at this position here, the vertices tool, and select the node you want to assign to this support created. So you, you click on apply here. So that support has been applied to this point. This support is a simply supported. It's a, it's a pin support. A restrained movement in the X, Y, and Z direction. It's restrained displacement movement in the X, Y, and Z direction. I'm going to, if, if I'm creating another, uh, okay, I think it's better. I will select this node. This node is at 3.5. This node is at uh, 7 meters. I want a support at this point. So I'm going to insert um, the same simply supported support at that point. So because I selected the node before creating it, the node automatically was, uh, was assigned to the support created. So you can do the same thing. I think it's faster to work like that. This is under 7 meters. So this node, I'm going to assign a simply supported, a pin support at that point. Insert um simply support so that's my third support at the end i'm going to also going to assign a simply support you will ask why am i um, applying simply support or two and that i only need to apply simply support on the first part or on the last part and the remaining should be ruler support it does not matter the support you use either pin or ruler when it comes to beam problem because the beam problem we're analyzing were not considering easier force. The what we're studying in beam problem is just the shear force and the bending moment. Because that because the beam is not carrying any easier force, so the easier force is zero. So it doesn't matter if you are using pin support or true. So for I will also um, for the half model, this is the first part. This second part at 3.5 meters where we pin support at this point. So at this node selected, I will insert my pin support. I also do that to the end of the beam. Insert pin support. Oh, I inserted a um, fixed rotation. I don't, that's supposed to be fixed rotation, so I'll delete it. Um, click on the node. Insert simply support. So once you have done that, on, on, uh, we also need there is support at this point. We need to at this point we need to restrain the rotation in the z direction to be zero. So we are using the uh, rotational um, support, which is selected. Click on rotational and click on the static structural tool. I click on it. Insert or let click on it. Insert um, fixed rotation, and uh, you will notice that it's always set as fix, fix, fix. It's actually what I needed to do. Rotation z equals to fix. This fix means that that node is not allowed to rotate. Theta is zero at the z direction. Although the y and z is fixed, I don't actually need it to be fixed. I can set I can set it to be free. But I'll leave it to be fixed because I want the result to be stable. If I know this um, setting the x and y to be fixed actually prevent um, this prevent um, the ANSYS software from giving me an error message for this half, half model geometry. And also, I also need to um, I also need to um, restrain some rotational points in my full model full model geometry. Which, uh, which I'm going to do now. Like at this point, you can just choose any node and restrain a rotational restraint. If, if I don't do it, I might, I might get an um, error message when I'm trying to run analysis. So I'm going to click on any of the nodes. I'm clicking on the first node on the full geometric model. And I'm also going to insert um, fixed rotation. Remember, because I need that there's definitely uh, at this point is not a fixed support. The rotation at Z cannot be fixed. It has to be free. If the X and Y that can be fixed, that can be anything. 
So I set it out. So the X and Y is already set as fixed, which is actually what I need. So with this, I've defined all my support condition. So what you need to do, I can group uh, all these supports into a folder, select everything by clicking control and clicking all of them all through. I click on it, group. So everything is grouped into one folder. I'll call it support. Can collapse it. So everything is all the supports inside a folder called support. Now I'm going to apply my um, load boundary condition for the full for the for the full um, for the full uh, geometric model and the half geometric model. Um, so what we need to do, let's go back to our PowerPoint. So I'll give you a brief introduction about this going on. Um, if you should notice something on the full model, we have, what are the loads on the full model? In the full model, we have uniform drill load of 10 kN per meter all through the span. And we have um, 30 kN 30 kN on the first and the third span, respectively. So um, remember, with for our full model, we define we, we define our model using five parts. So we need to specify the loading on each part separately. On the first part, this is the first part. Okay. This is the first part. The load on the first part is um, this 10 kN per meter. So we need to apply this 10 kN per meter on this first part. So um, we should note that the length of the... Um, on answer, this height is applied. Let me just go straight to it. Because the length is um, 3,500 millimeter, that is 3.5 meters. I, the resultant load on this pan is um, 3.5 times um, 10 kN per meter, which is 35 kN. 35 kilonewton. So you need to calculate the resultant load by much, which is done by multiplying the uniform drill load by the length. So we have 35 kilonewton. So that 35 kilonewton load is what we will specify in our ANSYS, um, our, in, in the ANSYS software. So you click on static structure inserts. Um, um, you, you use this um, Force um, definition, force um, option here. So you click on this. Um, so we, we need to select the edge. We, we need to uh, select the edge we want to apply to this force we just created. This force, um, this force option. We need to select an, the edge. We need to select an edge to be assigned to this um, force here. So what you need to do is make sure your edge. On, tool is active, click on it, the edge tool, and select the first part, and apply to the, and, and apply to the force we just created. Change the defined by from vector to components, and our force, you can see the force, you can specify force in x, y, z direction. I'm only, I'm only concerned about, uh, my, the force is in the y direction, and it's pointing downward. Um, so because it's pointing downward, I'll, I'm supposed to put minus 35 kilonewton. But the unit that is required there is in newton. So we enter um, 35,000 newton. 35,000 newton is equal to um, 35 um, kilonewton. So we enter that minus 35,000 um, newton. So this load is the uniform drill load on this span because this span is also 3.5 meters. Uh, can what, what, you, what you need to do, you, you should just duplicate this load. You can duplicate the load. Um, the parameters will be the same, but what you just need to change, you need to assign this span to the new load um, created. So I'll select this span and I will assign that span um, to the geometry. So now you can see first, the first load is for the first span. This load is for the second span. I'll do this for the third span too. What you need to do, you need to um, duplicate the load, 
select um, the geometric part and assign. And the loading, because the span is greater, is not 3.5 meter, it is 7 meters. So it, that means 7 meters times 10 kN per meter, that is 70 kN. So you need to enter 70,000 newton here. Yeah. Enter 70,000 newton. For this, I'm going to duplicate force 2. Because force 2 is 25,000 newton. So force, force 2 has been duplicated to force 4. Um, the only thing we need to do for this um, for new force created, we need to select this part and apply it to the force 4. 35,000 newton. You can see the force is um, 35,000 newton. So we don't need to change anything there. Uh, for the last part, okay, first we need to duplicate force 4 and assign this last part to the, to the duplicated part. The, to, be, to the duplicated force. Uh, once we have done this, we have defined all our, if we have defined the uniformly treated load on the full span. Uh, you should also note that the um, the point load on the span. We have um, We have um, 30 kN point load at this point. I also have 30 kN point load at this point. So we need to apply 30 kN point load at the node on this point, and we also need to apply 30 kN load at this point. These two node loads are actually node nodal load. So we apply this load not by H, but by using uh, the node point. So I'm going to uh, specify these two load conditions. This first, the first load is at um, 3.5 meters, and this second load is at 3.5 meters from this from this support. So I'm going to um, I can duplicate one of the force again, duplicate, uh, but I need to change my um, selection tool to vertex tool. And as we have seen, we have a this. This is the node where the 30 kN force is applied to. So I'll select it and I'll, I'll apply it to this um, new force created. And our Y, the load will be uh, minus 30,000 kN. So that is minus minus, 10, minus 30 kN, and that is a uh, minus 30,000 kN. Um, so we, what we can do, we can duplicate this for six, and just we really need to um, assign this node at this point to that point. So we can see for six, for seven, and see all the load that have been applied. The first six, the first uh, five nodes are edge node, while the six and seven are node node load. So these are the load for the um, full span for the full full geometric model. So moving to the um, half geometric model, you can duplicate um, force five uh, and apply that load to make. Sure, I want to apply edge node edge edge load. So I'll make sure I select um, edge the edge tool at the top here. Uh, with that selected, click on this edge and apply. Because the, the length of this span is 3.5 meters, so this load definition is correct. I will duplicate this for H2, duplicate, I will select this span, this span is also 3.5. So I will assign, I will, this force 9, I will duplicate it. Uh, select this part which I've selected for 10. I will apply to it. So I've applied all the edge load on this pan. And if you should notice, we have four more um, points load on this pan um, 30 kN load, which is 3.5 meter from this support. So I'm going to apply that. That is a nodal load. Uh, 
Okay, this so for seven or for six is not that load. So I'm going to duplicate one of that load. No duplicate. For eleven is a duplicated load. So I'm going to uh, change my to selection tool to vertices and click on assign and I will apply to that point so 30 kN and the load is on 30 kN at 30,000 meter properly defined so this is my load definition in the ANSI software uh, so what we can do now we can run analysis to see if an error message comes up or if our analysis will run um, successfully Let's see what happens. So the analysis ran um, successfully. So what we can do, uh, we can add our result we want to display. We might want to display the directional deformation in the y direction. Deformation. So once you add that directional deformation, you need to change the orientation to y um, direction because that is the direction that we are interested in. That is the direction of deformation. So you wanna you click on solve again. So you, you our result is now displayed. So you can animate this and see the beam is deflecting in a reasonable manner. I see the, you can see the uh, full model and the and the and the half model color plot is um, identical. Um, if you want to actually know see if they are identical, you can probe the node points. Say somewhere at this point at the mid one, the deformation is um. Let's change it to millimeter. Sorry. Let's change this to millimeter. The deformation is a three millimeter at somewhere here. Is that because I'm not selecting actually the middle? You can see the deformation is similar, very similar. Um, three point one six seven millimeter. Yes, and three point one seven three mm millimeter. Because I'm not selecting like an actual point, I'm just selecting a random point. See so somewhere at this point. We have a 0 0.78599 millimeter somewhere at the middle here. So a year is related like the exact point. That's why the deformation value are the same. So if we want to check the deformation here too, you can see 3.1731 millimeter. What is on the left hand side is what is on the right hand side. The response on the left and right hand side are the same, as you can see for the full uh, model analysis. So this is a deformation plot. Um, to check a bending moment and shape, bending moment shape for that, we need to do one. one we, need, we need to do something. Uh, we need to create like a path for our uh, for our um, bending moment and shape for that. I will show you how to do this. Under select your model. This model uh, button here on the on the left hand side. Right click inside. Under the um, construction geometry, click on part. And this part, so we are going to define it not by two points. I'm going to define it uh, by edge. Uh, once you have done that, we need to have select. Make sure your edge selection tool is active, and select all the edges. Hold, hold down your control key and select all the edges. I'm selecting all the edges for my full geometric model. I will apply to this um, part created. So that's all what you need to do for the first part. I also need to apply another part to the half model. So what I can do, I can just duplicate uh, this part. Uh, so I'm, uh, the part two has been duplicated, but I will change the edges um, selection. So I've changed it. I've applied um, these three, the three edges on this half model to part two. So this is part one, this is part two. So once you have done this, um, I can use this part to generate my bending moment and shear force diagram. So insert under the beam results, shear moment diagram. So the, um, the part, I'm using the part one, first part, 
and your um, this definition type, you have to change it to the second option. This is why you must change the second option. This second option gives you value for the shear force value in the y direction, bending moment in the z direction, and the deformation in the y direction, which is what we need. Three bending, three uh, three diagram, three um, results in one. And so that's what you need to do. I can also duplicate these results. But here I will change the part to the other parts. Uh, yeah, that's what I need to do. So let's run an analysis to see to check our result. So this is our first um, our first bending moment diagram. This is the bending moment diagram for the three span. And see the results. We have um, um, this is shear force at the first internal support. The shear force at this point here is um, 59,254 newton. The shear force at um, the, at the second internal support at the first one of the shear forces are minus fifty nine thousand two hundred fifty four two hundred fifty uh, forty five newton. The bending maximum bending moment in the first pan is um, let me change it to a uh, newton meter try to give us a better result. So the, the maximum bending moment is 81,299 newton per meter. In kilonewton, it will be, be, be 81.399 kilonewton meter. At the support, the maximum bending moment is um, 64,710 newton meter. So this is the shear force diagram, the bending moment diagram, and the um, deformation diagram. And we can also see the same thing for the half model. This is the half model. This is the uh, last span, and the first part is the is the 3.5 uh, 3.5 meter mid span, and the second part is the seven meter um, the last span, the seven meter span. So you can see the result is the same. We have um, 59,254 newton at this first interior support as the shear force value. If we check the uh, full model, we we have um, the same results, identical results. So the shear force is the same. Uh, the shear force at the end, although it, uh, in this diagram they did not specify the shear force at the end. In the um, in the um, half model, we, we see the value here as um, forty thousand seven hundred fifty-four newton. If we want to check um, other results at other points. We actually have a tabular result here for the shear force, bending moment, and the deformation. So let's say we want to determine, want to check uh, the shear force at um, seven meter. So you, you 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 scroll down until you get to seven meter. So this is seven meter. I see this seven meter. The shear force is um uh, we have two shear force value because um this is is a point load. Is a like reaction point. You have to have two shear force value there. The bending moment value, although it's two value, but the bending moment are the same. Uh, the deformation at the at that point should be zero because we don't we don't have we don't have movement in the y direction at that point. This is very accurate. So this is how you you view results. Say you, you want to check result at 3.5 meters. You can also check at 3.5. We should also have an Two values at that point. You can see the two value. You can see the um, you can see the result at um, 3.5. So this is these are the shear force value, the bending moment at 3.5 in the tabular uh, in the tabular um, result in the result table. So you can this is how you view realize res, uh, results in the ANSYS software. You can see how ANSYS um, sketch the bending moment shear force and the formation shape of our beam. You can check the result at each point along the beam. Like on, on this, ANSYS is giving us result at uh, every uh, 0 0.05 meters, uh, which is uh, too detailed, if I may say. Um, say you want to uh, display result for just one span. Uh, you can also do that. Say I want to display results, many moment diagram for just the mid span. What you need to do, this is how you do it actually. 
uh, you create a part. Let me duplicate this part. So, and you select this mid point. So I want to just, I want to just get a result for this part. So you select this part, just this part, and you apply just that edge to the part three. So I can um, duplicate one of these results too, and change the parts to part three. And one analysis. Let's see the results. You can see uh, we are get, we are just getting many moment shear force and deformation results <coughs> for just one span. You can see the shear force at this. You can see the shear force diagram, the bend moment diagram, and deformation diagram. Uh, so this is it. Um, before I end this video, I would like to um, show you how to actually. Um, Um, how to actually visualize like a half model result color plots to a full model uh, color plot result. Currently, um, ANSYS, in the ANSYS software, you can display like half color plot result to the full model result. I'm going to show you how to do that now. What you need to do under this model button here, right click, insert, click on geometry. And under geometry, if you click on geometry and you don't see anything here, what you need to do, you go to your uh, workbench working environment under the tool, option, um, appearance. You need to uh, check um, this beta option. If it's, so once you check this and this, if it's unchecked on your on your um, computer, make sure this is checked and click on OK. Once you have done that. Uh, this table should be active. So with this selected, we need to do one thing. We need to create our coordinate system. A coordinate system. Why? Why I need to create a coordinate system? I want to attach a coordinate system here, as a coordinate system here, which I want to define. I want to define these points. These points here, as my zero zero um, coordinate zero zero uh, coordinate coordinate point, with using a new coordinate system. That coordinate system is what I want to use to mirror my um, half model to the right, to the left hand side. So under the coordinate, click insert coordinate system. Under this table here, you just need to um, select um, this node point. Oh, selecting it, you're selecting it. I apply to it. Okay, it's already applied. So select it and you click on apply. So to apply that coordinate system to that point. So this is our this is the coordinate system by default. This is the this is our created coordinate system. Now I want to use this this coordinate system in our symmetric tree. Yeah? So under the coordinate system, you change this uh, global coordinate system to uh, coordinate system. Change this method here yeah, to half. Give this delta s a very small value, say zero point zero zero one, and check your um, results now. Oof. It's not mirroring the results. Let's go back to see what is going on. Okay, I think I know what went wrong. <laughs> I didn't actually do some number of repeats. You have to set it to two. It's currently set to zero. So once you um, do that, check uh, your directional deformation results. You can see now the uh, our half model has been mirrored to the other side, and we can we can also prove for the result at um, that point. Can see the results are the same at that point for the full model and for the half model. The results are the same. We can change our um, unit to millimeter so I'll get more reasonable results. So these are millimeter deformation results. So this is how we analyze um, beam problem using the ANSYS software uh, by also taking advantage of symmetry. Uh, we see in, in the beginning of the video, I explained like this a simple concept where symmetries apply to simple supported beam, and you can actually, um, with that idea, you can use that idea to solve more complex problems like this continuous, uh, like this three span continuous beam problem. Uh, I've come to the end of today's video, and this is actually the last video on beam problem. In my next video, I'm going to move. I'm going to move to um, frame problem. We're going to um, look 
at how we can solve a frame problem using a finite element procedure. I'm going to give a brief and theoretical explanation on the finite element procedure for frame problem. I'm going to solve some example of frame problem on MATLAB and also on the ANSI software. And we're also going to look at the concept, concept of symmetry as it relates also to um, frame problem. Thank you so much for watching my video and I hope you've learned one or two things um, from the video. What you learn from this video is actually like basic and it's what will actually help you and to actually solve a more complex uh, problem um, in the video. Have a nice day.